hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how you can record any screen inside android uh, using uh, media projection uh, for native android application uh, so let's get started uh, so firstly uh, I, I will show you guys the output so here you can see i have two buttons uh, one is called get permission so this get permission button will basically get permission for notifications so from android t and above you require notification permission but i am using android r so even if i didn't request this permission that would have been fine for me but most of you might have already upgraded to android t that's why i wanted to show it to you so here if i click on this get permission button here you can see it is not presenting the permission dialog to me because this permission was previously automatically granted uh, in lower versions of android like below android t but from android t uh, if you click on this get permission button it will show you a pop-up asking for granting uh, asking for you to grant uh, notification permission to this app so you should uh, allow that once this permission has been allowed if i click on the start recording button uh, this particular pop-up will differ from android os so for me it is sh shown something like this but in your case it might ask you to record uh, the record our app or record the entire screen uh, so it depends on what android version you are using and the user will just have to click on start now and at the very top uh, you should see a foreground service has been started so here uh, you can see a foreground service has started now i can just move away from my app as well if i want to i can just uh, go to this uh, settings app and it should uh, automatically capture the settings app as well now again i'll just go back to my app and i'll just click on stop recording now as soon as i click on stop recording the uh, uh, foreground service is stopped and also uh, if i go to my uh, uh, videos app uh, here you can see the first video has been saved from our uh, recording app so the, if the user wants they can see uh, the video is also saved to external storage so i'm playing this video now uh, so yeah uh, that's what uh, this particular uh, thing is about so if the user wants to later on uh, use this particular video uh, they can use that as well so this is an actual video if i just uh, show it to you here you can see this is the progress bar which is working uh, so yeah that's what uh, this is uh, hopefully you got the point so let's see how to do this again a huge shout out to philip lackner because i have followed his tutorial on his youtube channel but his was using jetpack compose i'm using xml layout uh, but mo like more than 99 percent of the code remains the same uh, there is one change which i have done which i would like to share it with you uh, but i will tell you that later on so just create an android application like i told you i'm using xml layout but if you want you can use jetpack compose as well next uh, you will have to go to activity underscore main first so just go to uh, res uh, layout activity underscore main and here you can see i have just taken two button one for uh, getting the permission and one for starting or stopping the recording so make sure you add the proper ids to uh, those buttons now once that is done you will have to go to uh, build.gradle.kts and here i have updated the min sdk version to 26 uh, which according to me should be fine because there are some apis which are all only available from 26 so that's why i've upgraded it to 26 compile sdk is 35 or whatever is the latest version at the time of you watching the video you can use that uh, ignore this error this is not really an error it is just an android studio thing uh, now just scroll down and here you can see i have added one more dependency called android x window so make sure you add this particular dependency now this is warning is telling me to use the version catalog i don't want to use the version catalog but if you want you can use it uh, but you just add this particular dependency and just click on sync now it will download all the android dependencies for you uh, once that is done you just have to go to android manifest.xml and here you can see i have added this foreground service permission then you also need this foreground service media projection permission now we don't have to request this permission via code we just have to declare this inside android manifest and we also require this post notification permission this is only required if you are if you, the user is using android tn above so that's what uh, the code i have written uh, when we click on the get permissions button and also here you will have to define a service with the name of service record service screen record service now we have not created this kotlin file yet so i'll show you that so you might get an error when you write this down but this get, error will get resolved automatically once we create the kotlin file exported is false unable is true and foreground service type is media projection so do that 
once uh, that is done uh, if you first go to first create a kotlin file called notification helper so here you can see i have just created one kotlin file uh, these are all the imports for it i have defined it a channel id you can change it to whatever you feel like then here is our create notification so we just create an intent then a printing intent then we with the help of notification compat dot builder we set the content title text icon as well as content intent and here you can see uh, we create a notification channel as well so i think this is not necessary uh, because uh, i am anyways uh, using uh, hdk26 so if you want you can just uh, remove this like this but if you are using uh, less than hdk26 which i won't recommend because you will face issue uh, but yeah if you are anyways using it uh, less than 26 then you will have to write that particular check as well but i have removed that check so this is just the notification channel thing which is only available from android o. so make sure you add that then you have to create another kotlin file called screen record service.kt so that's what i have done over here again these are all the imports so feel free to pause the video and just copy these imports then uh, there is one more thing which i have done is you will have to go to build.gradle.kts and here you will also have to add this kotlin parcelize uh, just to uh, send and receive data or parcelize the data so this is very helpful so make sure you add this particular thing as well and just click on sync now it will download the dependencies for you uh okay so like i said uh here we have created this screen record config with a result code as well as a data and it is of type parcelable then here i have created a service so this will help us to automatically capture uh the uh, screen uh even when the app is not in foreground so here is our media projection here is our virtual display here is our media recorder as well uh okay then here we have created one coroutine scope here i am saving the file temporarily uh this is our media projection manager uh then uh, here i have created this media projection callback on stop and once our uh, uh, user stops recording we need to save the file to the gallery right so this is the entire code what it does it we need to get hold of content values this is where i'm storing it you can change it to your own app name over here uh, here we get hold of our video collection then we just do content resolver dot insert video collection okay and here we are overriding this on start command as well so in case of start recording we have create our notification then we create a notification channel and here we start our foreground uh, something like this for android q and above and for lower android version we start it like this and here we just change this value and here we just call start recording for this we call start record stop recording and inside start recording we just create one config uh, so if above android t then we use intent.get parcelable extra whereas for lower android version we use it like this uh, then uh, if config equal to equal to null we just return then here we create our media projection we register the callback we initialize our recorder we start and here we create our virtual display as well this is the code for stopping the recording this is the code for stopping the service uh, here we get our window size as well uh, now uh, suppose uh, there is another method which i had uh, which i had copied uh, called get scaled uh, dimension uh, but i didn't find this useful because uh, it uh, suppose if uh, this is only useful when you want to record some part of your screen you don't want to record the entire screen so suppose i only want to record the first one fourth of a screen then i think this would be useful uh, you can change the, you can play around with this method but i want to record the entire screen that's why i have commented this out and if you are using this particular thing then you can use it like this but uh, for me i have just used it like this so if you are using uh, this particular thing you can just comment this one out okay uh, so yeah um, then here with media recorder we just set the video source set the output format set the output file now this is the thing which according to me causes issue if you are using varish hdk minimum hdk version less than 26 uh, so yeah you will have to find out some uh, uh, alternatives for this that's why i have updated to uh, hdk 26 which according to me is fine uh, then here we set the video size we set the video encoder we set the video encoding bit rates we set the video frame rate we prepare it here we create our virtual display as well and here we just do media projection dot create virtual display pass our screen width height uh, density api virtual display flag auto mirror media recorder surface callback as well as handler and here we just call on destroy so we start uh, stop our uh, is service running is false and uh, cancel our children of uh service scope coroutine context 
this is the code for releasing resources here we just call on bind and we return null and here is our companion object as well uh, so here I have just defined a mutable state of flow here I have just check is service running or not uh, I have created a different variable inside main activity just to check whether serv is service running or not but you can use this particular variable as well if you want to and here is our video frame rate here is our video bit rate kilobytes and this is the start recording stop recording and key recording config okay then uh, let's go back to main activity uh, here you can see uh, all I have done is that so these are firstly these are all the imports uh, which we have so you can if you want you can just copy this imports here I have created our record button as well get permission button and one variable just to check whether the service is running or not uh, again uh, it, it depends on you uh, whether you want to create a separate variable or you can use it uh, this particular variable itself from the service uh, so yeah it's up to you uh, then uh, if you want you can use it like this something like this i guess value equal to equal to true i think so this should work then we don't need this uh, let me just uh, quickly check if this is working or not because we don't need to uh, set this values over here okay so let me uh, just try it one more time before i show you the main activity code whether this really works or not because i think uh, using the uh, uh, is service from the uh, service class itself is a better idea so if i will just click on start recording I'll click on start now okay so the button has automatically changed to stop recording and uh, i'll just go back and i'll just reopen my app i'll click on stop recording so it has stopped recording if i go back over here yeah okay so i'm able to see the video so yeah this also works uh, so yeah so what i have done uh, then uh, first get hold of our two buttons then here i'm using a register for activity result just to check uh, whether we have the post notification permission or not uh, again that is only from android t and above so here i have just displaying some toast message uh, here we are initializing our both of our button inside on create so once get permission button uh, is clicked uh, we assign a click listener to it here i'm just checking whether we are above android t or not if yes uh, then we uh, check whether we have the proper permission uh, if we have proper permission then i'm just display a toast message if not then we request for the permission and for lower android version we just display permission already granted okay then here for our record button i'm just checking if service is running or not if it is already running then we stop our service and uh, we just change the text of our button to start recording if it is not uh, already running then uh, we start our service so we just do start screen capture then here we just do get system service as media projection manager capture screen uh, capture screen create uh, screen capture intent here we just do screen recorder launcher dot launch here we just do start uh, screen record service uh, here is our service intent uh, here is our action and here we just do put extra here we start our foreground service here is our record button dot text stop recording uh, register and here is our register for activity result which gets called uh, from uh, over here so here we are calling for capturing so basically we just do this screen record config and just start our screen record service uh, which is over here which basically calls the screen record service class which we have defined over here and it will start recording the uh, screen so yeah that's it uh, don't uh, forget this particular thing this is very important otherwise you might be wondering why it is not working and this particular permissions as well so yeah that's it also if you remember i have already made a video previously about capturing any screen native android application but in that case i was using a third party library uh, here i am just uh, making uh, you no third party library so according to me try to avoid using a third party library because i personally don't like using third party libraries but yeah it's up to you whatever uh, way you prefer uh, is right for you use that uh, thank you for watching bye